This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Carl, CEO of GR Capital. Welcome to the official GR Capital podcast. It's Friday. You know what time it is, a weekly podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course, the Anchor app. Uh, thank you so much again for joining us this and every week. We do this every Friday right around 4 to 5 p.m. We recap the markets, answer your questions, talk about what's to come, politics, economics, markets, investing, the whole shebang. We do it all. And of course, uh, hosting with you every single week. Thank you guys again for your support. And of course, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which this will be on YouTube as well, at GAR Capital on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're pushing to get more subscribers. Of course, it's free. Please do so. We really would, really would appreciate it. So we can get you some more cool stuff as we go along. So what a week we had, right? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So uh, markets did jump this week, right? Uh, they actually got that break finally. It took a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead, if you are on uh, YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and bring up CNN Money. Actually, let me go ahead and bring up Google. This gives us a nice way to look at the market in general. So CNN Money, and I always go put the, uh, the Dow Jones. So I go ahead and type it in, and I go to the Dow Jones Index. If you're watching on YouTube, you can follow with me. So the Dow Jones this week gained about one and a half percent. Again, I talked about the Dow Jones before. It's more of a broad based index. I like more of the S&P. That's how I trade uh, and how our team trades. So again, uh, up 1.49% for the week, uh, up still about 15% we, uh, year to date for the Dow Jones. Again, nowhere near a recession. Nothing has changed in, recent, in that sense. Uh, no need to panic. Again, this is what we had. So, uh, Monday was a short, we were at a short week due to Labor Day weekend. Tuesday, we did gap down uh, due to the weekend on Sunday and Monday. Uh, I guess trade tensions with China, same song, same dance. We know the drill. We fell 285 points on Tuesday. We bounced up nicely on Wednesday, 237 points, kind of a relief rally. And then Thursday, in Wednesday overnight, Thursday, we had the talk of the Chinese were talking about Phone call, deal was uh, a time to meet in October. First it was September, now it's October, and that's where we are. So again, big, big gap up on the Dow. And you can see the same thing on the S&P. Again, if you're following on YouTube, you can watch this with me. And you can see uh, the S&P again, which is more broad-based. You can see up about 1.79%, uh, since they're not as weighted like the Dow with their only 30 companies, 1.79% uh, week five-day change. Uh, what a difference in five days. Uh, four green days, one red day. The S&P is up about 19% year to date. 29.78 is where we close on the S&P. So again, a lot of things did happen. Again, um, let's go ahead and talk about it. I mean, for the most part, stocks did bounce back. We talked about that. And um, I mean, it's all trade deal. I mean, you kind of have two two headed monster here with the market. What what is what's happening here? You know, it's kind of left hand and right hand. So what we're seeing here is that. The Fed is reacting to the trade war, and I guess Trump is reacting to the Fed. So it's almost kind of like a Machiavellian approach that he's willing to cut his nose to spite his face in a sense that I'll go ahead and push the trade war so I can get my I can get interest rates lower because he hasn't been private in saying that he thinks we should get another 100 basis points to the downside. I know we've talked about this constantly, guys, but this is what's happening. Again, it's trade war related. Everything is trade war related going forward. So again, are we getting closer to a deal? I don't know. I think we've been around this circle now for about 18 months and nothing has really changed. I mean, we just ride the wave. That's all you can do. Um, I thought that honestly, we were going to fall back a little more. I thought that 2947 level would be rejected. We broke through that. Now we're at 2983 on ES, which is E-mini features. And again, we just have to ride it up to 3000 to 3100 maybe. And 3100 could be a good place to short. If you own stocks, you're happy that you're recovering from those big, big, uh, I guess, reversal downtrend. I mean, we got as low as 2810. Uh, back in August, and if I bring up here a four-hour chart on MES, you can see that we got it down as a 27.97. So again, uh, the lowest we've gotten was June 27.33, and we've had about 130, a 233 point, 333 handle move on ES. So again, could have that have been the bottom? I don't know if we have a bottom in yet. Uh, I think Guy Adami and Fast said it best that if we top out around 30 to 35 on VIX then you could see a bottom. We're not at that fear index. Again, we were heavily very, very bearish heading into September uh, because of August was still very choppy. We had a quadruple top and then we finally broke out and we're now at 29.83, uh, next level on my uh, Fibonacci level here. 
uh, on MES, which is micro e-mini futures, is 3,005. I think we can get there. The thing is that we don't have a catalyst for the next two weeks. The next catalyst is the Fed meeting. We just had NFP, NFP missed. So again, we're still growing jobs. Job uh, unemployment is still pretty pretty great. But again, uh, not, not exactly a blockbuster number, but still that's where we are. I mean, we're still the best house in a bad neighborhood globally. And you know, go, PMIs are going down. That's a, uh, manufacturing indexes um, for worldwide. I mean, we're in a manufacturing recession. We had an actual um, an actual contraction in a uh, IV, I think it's with the PMIs, uh, manufacturing PMIs, uh, just a week ago. So again, again, consumer runs this market. We talked about it. Uh, retail still doing strong. Look at Costco doing great. Lululemon did great. These are stocks that are that are doing solid. I mean, retail is still going strong, but again. The China trade deal is still on everyone's head. So uh, that's where we are. Again, European stocks up as well. I'm reading here on my iPad. Uh, again, <laughs> trade war is good for everybody. It lifts all boats here. Uh, looking across the board here again, uh, we just had a little bit of a kind of a weak fall in the S&P. Uh, at the end of the day, we we're up triple digits in the Dow. But again, kind of a kind of a pullback in a sense. We we're up as much as 120 points. Uh, big winners today. Uh, you can see here, uh, I think it was H Home Depot. Had some unusual options activity. Home Depot soared today. TGT retail, AT&T and Verizon have been doing very solid. We talked about it. With yields going low, their dividend play. Telecoms have been doing very solid. I own both stocks. Roku has been absolutely on fire. I own that as well. Uh, Costco, we've traded that as well. Big, big number. Uh, same store sales did very well. Lulu had very good same store sales. Uh, marijuana stocks. Uh, I got a question asked about that as well. They were up. So again, you're starting to see a little bit of a risk on movement now. So again, everyone's saying that everyone feels good. Remember guys, August was a, was a vacation month for most people. Very low volumes. Now we're back, everyone's back in their trading desk. Um, no more, no more uh, vacation, back to school. Uh, I guess we had a short week, but again, keep in mind, this is the last day off for the market until Thanksgiving, which is I believe November 23rd. So again, you have about the next three months to really make it happen. And I think the next three months guys can make your year. Uh, third quarter and fourth quarter, again, historically, very vol uh, very volatile in the third quarter. So again, these chart moves are a way to make some money if you're day trading. If you're investing, again, nice little pop. Maybe, again, if you see any kind of names that uh, you want to reload on. For example, I, I bought some Ulta. I went ahead and bought some Ulta for our investment group I after a 23% fall. I want I, this is a stock I've been wanting to buy. And then I like the retail space. I like the make of where it's going. I bought that and I bought Louis Vuitton, uh, Moet Hennessy. And they own Sephora. I've been wanting to get into that space for a while. I thought Ulta was a little expensive. Got in that pullback about 20%, fell back another 3%. That's fine. But I wanted to get into stocks that I've been wanting to get into, but I thought the price was a little too high. So again, these are names. That again, you have a checklist of names that you think, if we get a fall, you want to go and add on. Amazon, or Google, you know, the big names that are expensive. You want to get into those names that maybe they're a lot of your price range or maybe just a little too much for you. Uh, maybe Apple's a little too expensive. Maybe Boeing is too expensive for you. Again, names that just seem to you, uh, or Costco's at 300. Uh, you know, those kind of names are just like, ah, oh, I don't want to put that much in. Uh, you would want to get into those names personally. Maybe Nvidia is at 178. Maybe you want to get back down to 150. You know, those kind of names, a Netflix at 290 a share. Maybe you want to get down to 230. Save yourself $60 a share. Start making grocery lists. I would say kind of like a Christmas list of names that where if you see stock markets drop that are based on broad base, not company specific, you want to go ahead and buy those. So again, I, I would highly recommend you guys do that. Get a list of five stocks, just write them down. This is the prices I would like to buy. It's kind of like car shopping. Hey, I really like that car, but I'm going to wait for the slow period so I can go ahead and make a deal. Same thing with stocks, guys. Investments should be the same today as they are 10 minutes from now. Your investment strategy should not change in 10 minutes because of a price change. They should stay the same. So again, if you buy it today, it should be viable next month. It should be viable next year. If it's an investment, if it's a trade, completely different story. It's all about price. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, definitely hard holiday short week. Uh, US equity market soared and squeezed higher to end green with NASDAQ leading. Small caps still lagging. That's something I've been looking at, which is IWM, uh, Russell, 2000, Russell 2000 index still kind of lagging. Uh, they did get out of correction territory, but it's still below the 200-day moving average. Uh, again, extra day for futures due to the volatility. Volatility increase for futures. That's something that I trade personally with our team overnight as well. Again, it's very liquid. Uh, that's something that we'll be talking about on the next uh, video course for Udemy and our website. We're going to go into diving a little bit more into futures trading. Got a lot of people asking me about that, so we'll get over that, over that with, with you guys. 
Uh, and market implied odds of a U.S.-China trade deal has gone up to around 28% in September off the August lows of about 5%. So that's a good sign. Uh, cyclicals, again, have made a big comeback, but defenses also ended the week positive. So again, po uh, uh, defensive stocks, again, we talked about staples, uh, utilities, real estate, uh, gold. Those have still gone pretty well. We'll talk about the commodities here in a bit, but they are still up about 1% for the week. But cyclicals, again, retail, automobiles, airlines, those kind of names that when things are going well, they're the ones that go up and they actually shot up like a bat out of hell, which is a good sign. Uh, treasury yields also go up. We talked about treasury yields. Very, very important. When yields go up, bonds go down in price. So again, people were selling bonds. They felt a little better with this China deal. If we get one, nothing has been done yet. Again, it's the same vicious cycle. There's going to say, hey, we're going to have a deal. We don't have a deal. More rhetoric. We'll have a phone call. They're, they're great. And they didn't do a deal. So pick your time where the hell we are. All we can do is just react, guys. We don't know what's happening in that White House. So again, right now, everything looks great. I mean, we're really about 2% off all-time highs. Maybe 1% off all-time highs is that. So that's where we are. Uh, treasury yields are going down. Uh, treasury yields are going up, which is what we needed. 30-year end about six basis points. Two, two years ended up about two and a half basis points uh, to the upside, even though we fell a little bit at the end of the day. Uh, the 30-year uh, yields maintained over 2%, but tumbled today at the end of the day session, which is fine. So the yield steep in a, for the three-month and the 10-year but then bounce back and it's still inverted, the spread between the three month note and the 10 year bonds. But again, it's throwing the right approach. I mean, we could have, we may have hit a bottom on yields. So keep in mind guys, if we get a trade deal, yields are gonna go up. So again, if you wanna refinance your house right now, it'd run about three and a half percent for a 30 year fixed mortgage. I would highly recommend you do so if you can afford it, if there's a house, house you really want. But again, uh, yields could bounce back. I mean, we've. Definitely almost got into oversold conditions, but keep that in mind. Uh, dollar index has fallen for four straight days, now at two-year lows. So again, you would think commodities would bounce with that. They have not. We're going to get into that soon. Uh, cryptos ended the week probably higher. We did fall earlier today. We were up about 4% on Bitcoin, fell about 2% at the end of the day on futures. Uh, we flirted with that 11,000 level on Bitcoin futures. We're now at 10,420. Looks around 9,500 to 10,000 is that support level for Bitcoin. Again, we own Bitcoin. We want to own Bitcoin forever. I buy some every week, no matter what. So I have dollar cost average. Uh, looks like we are getting a nice triangle coming in for Bitcoin. Um, if you want to take a look at it with me, guys, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take up Active Trader and I'm going to go ahead and BTC. And this, if you're watching here on, uh, on, um, excuse me, on YouTube, you can see here, I'm looking at, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my uh, marker and just go ahead and go to highlighter. And you can see that we're starting to get a little bit of a wedge coming on. As the price compresses here on the four hour chart, we're either gonna get a breakout or we're gonna get a solid breakdown. Again, 8,194 would be a nice level for a support, but I think that we're gonna get up to 12,000 here on uh on bitcoin so keep that an eye there so i'm gonna go ahead and race that and i'm gonna turn back on my pointer for youtube so you can see that compression going on as we get tighter and tighter in that range uh gold and silver uh this is where we are let's go ahead and bring up a gold chart for our youtube viewers again it's just parabolic moves all the way this is a four hour chart i'll go ahead and bring up a daily chart and uh, just give me a second on this low here you go you can see just a parabolic move almost at the end of, of, of may straight to the top again this has all been risk off movement way above the 50 way above the 100 way above the 200 average we tapped 1566 looks like we're getting straight to 1600 on futures 1515 is level i would like to see 1500 hold on futures i think we do i think the lowest we'll get to is 1470 which is the 50 day movement average could be a great play to reload on some gold if you've been wanting to add gold to your portfolio guys this may be the time maybe put a limit order on fifteen hundred dollars an ounce and that'd be a good way to get in uh if you do want to play gold there's a couple of places you could do it you could do apmex atmex.com you can get gold coins that's where i have coins and bars in my safe for gold that's be a way to play or you can buy gld or you can buy barrett gold or gdx which is the gold miners i'll go over each chart with you on youtube as you're watching uh, right now, you can see on the daily, same kind of moves in the futures. Parabolic straight to the top, 146.82, fell about five bucks since the top, and looks like 140.85 is the FIB support level for GLD. 
could be a buy. I would like long-term options here on gold. And I'll tell you why. We may get, obviously, I think we're already baked in a 25 basis point cut from the Fed in September. That's in two weeks. If they do, the dollar weakens, commodities go up. Cheaper money creates inflation. So again, how do you want to hedge on that kind of move? Gold, Bitcoin, silver, dividend stocks. We talked about utilities, real estate. That's where we want to go. Let's look at uh, Barrick Gold. Again, I have some long-term positions on Barrick Gold. Same thing, a little more uh, volatile here, but I still like it long-term, great volume. 2007 was the high on the daily, 1787. Looks like we want to tap 17, 15, 57 on the 50-day moving average. Same exact deal. This is Rand Gold. They are a miner. If you want to go to GDX, this is the Gold Miners ETF. Again, same kind of parabolic move, a little more volatile. You see a 3% drop. And we're right there at 27.90 on the 50-day moving average. If you want to play silver, which is outpaced gold in gains, SLV is the way to go. Again, you see 3% drop and same move, except for May, uh, around end of May, beginning of June, you can see just that parabolic move from about 14 to 18, big, big gains. You're talking about it's up 26% in about a couple months. So, you know, that's not sustainable, but I like it long-term. I own some silver personally. I don't own SLV, but I own SLV calls long-term. Take a look at them. Could be a play for you guys. So that's where we are um, in regards to gold and all that stuff. That's commodities. Uh, let's go ahead and answer some questions here on our YouTube channel. Uh, or excuse me, YouTube channel, our Instagram channel. So let's go ahead and answer. Uh, let's see. So I got some questions. If I can bring it up here. Market related questions. Let's see. Okay. So Young Gray asks, what do you think on Iron Mountain? Ah, I forget. I, I like Iron Mountain actually. Iron Mountain. If I can bring this up. I forget the ticker, stock. Iron Mountain stock is IRM. Let's take a look at the chart together. So again, I'm gonna ask these questions with the assumption of investments, not, not just a trading. So again, 3305 on the daily. I think we're about to break out the 200 day moving average. I like this chart actually. It looks like we already that little channel here, 3305. I would like to target maybe that gap fill about 35 to 37. What I like about Iron Mountain is the dividend. So let's take a look at the dividend together. Uh, go ahead and bring it up here. Uh, dividend yield is 7.39%. That's better than anything else you're going to get out there in regards to bonds. Gold doesn't even pay a dividend. Again, one of a really good one. That could be a play. I do like Iron Mountain. Take a look at that because if you want to get into cyclical plays, I mean to defensive, Iron Mountain could be it. So again, let's go ahead and write that down together. IRM. I've been watching that for a while too. 7.39% yield. Take a look at that. Now, if you really want to in, uh, take a look at their dividend, you'll go dividend history. Let's see if they have ever missed a dividend history. A dividend history on, oh, dividend.com should be a way to bring this up. Let's take a look at that together. Again, everyone on YouTube is looking at it. And you can see annualized payout about $2.44, paid quarterly payout ratio 115.3, dividend growth, nine years dividend growth since 2010. So they have been consistent with their dividend so it looks like the dividend expiration date is september 13th could be a way to get in i like it go ahead and invest in it yes i will give you my my approval on that one i think we get to 36 and then maybe hold to that level 37 would be nice but again guys this is a dividend stock it's not a growth stock so keep that in mind don't expect major returns uh recession soon suckers rallying inverted curve market also rallies as starts thinking recession soon again i get this question every day we are not in a recession, period. Fear is driving this market right now. But again, we had a relief rally due to a trade war maybe possibly talking to each other, China and the United States. That's all it is, massive short squeeze. Everyone was caught on the wrong side. Everyone was very bearish. I had some futures contract that was bearish. I quick flipped overnight, went cut bullish, made that money back, and then some. So again, got to be fluid, guys. Got to be fluid. I had some spy call, spy puts this week. Went to hell. What can you do? Happens. Um, inverted curve. Yeah, but again, inverted curve lags. It's two years away. So would you want to bet that two years of recession comes? Sure, that's fine. Does that mean you're going to go crazy today? No, I just think that you should prepare yourself. Again, don't, don't buy an umbrella when it's raining. You can buy an umbrella before it is, and I understand that. But don't walk around with an umbrella in your hands when it's sunny outside. That's the best analogy I can give you when it comes to recession. Uh, CGC call. CGC actually had a really good move today. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at CGC together. Uh, maybe get some volume here going. Um, I'm seeing some call volume here on CGC, uh, maybe almost like a three to one put call to put ratio. Uh, September 6th is expired. 
Let's see if we have any kind of uh, unusual options activity for a longer period of time. Uh, the only one that seems pretty interesting here are the September 20th, the 30 calls. So let's take a look at CGC together. Maybe we could take a look at those 30 calls. Yeah, it looks like we're trying to get back a bottom here. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up an hourly chart. Maybe we get a breakout. Yeah, I can see that we're kind of fading now. I would say 28.91 first in order to confirm this move. So I, I would say about another dollar upside, $2 maybe. Uh, no, about a dollar upside, dollar 30. In order to get some calls here, I would like to break this, uh, this resistance here for CGC before we get into any 30 calls. Uh, you still get a dollar level, dollar away. Um, that's about another maybe 3% move to the upside. Could be nice, but again, this has been beaten down. I, I still like it long term. Again, we got as high as 59.25 on the daily last year. We're now almost half that, less than half that. So uh, again, it's a wild ride. If you don't like these kind of stocks, maybe you're not meant for lot, for heavy, aggressive growth, then you're sticking with dividends then. Uh, SLV, we talked about SLV. I still like it long term. Is gold bull or bear? I still like gold bullish due to the central banks and what's going on. Is college a good place to learn how to trade and invest? How did you guys get to where you are? This is Greg. Uh, no, college will not help you know how to trade. College will not teach you anything about trading. They don't do that. But you have classes on investing. Well, the teacher is finance. That's fine, the back end stuff, the, the economics of it. But how do you learn how to trade? You gotta do it on your own. I mean, we do we teach one on one, but there's also free stuff out there. There's Investopedia, we have our free ebook. There's others, other resources out there. YouTube will help you. But again, it's kind of like reading a book on how to ride a bike. You still got to get on the bike. You still got to trade on your own. I really recommend demo trading, getting a system together, learning, 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 invest in your learning, guys. And thoughts on Ford, our last question. Ford, again, is cyclical. I don't want to be in anything of automobiles, especially with any tariffs with Europe, uh, because uh, Donald Trump, the president, is talking about doing tariffs with automobiles in Europe. And of course, what is Europe going to do? tariffs on the United States and Ford is an American car maker. I'm not a fan. Stay away from automobiles. I don't care if it's GM. I don't care if it's Tesla. I don't care if it's Ford. I don't care if it's Ferrari. I don't want to be in automobiles. They're cyclical, meaning in a recession, they're going to be the first dominoes to fall. Automobiles slow down when people freak out. So keep that in mind. So that's where we are for the week, guys. I mean, uh, trade war back, trade war uh, pulls down. Maybe we don't know what we're going to get, but all I know is that we got to stick to our plan and sticking to it is what we do. So again, stay patient. Finally, a full week back on it in September. We got a whole way right till Thanksgiving. Let's rock it. Thank you so much for joining me again. This is Carlos, CEO of GAR Capital. Any questions, GAR Capital, FX.com is our website. Twitter, GAR Capital. Instagram, GAR Capital. YouTube channel, GAR Capital. Noticing a pattern, right? It's GAR Capital. Appreciate you guys. And uh, we'd love to have you on board again to join our single service for options and Forex. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one teaching, if you're interested in any assistance, please shoot us a DM or email gaircapital at gmail.com. Appreciate you as always, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll catch you guys next week.